All right, now, let's look at another article here on origins of marijuana use in humanity. And uh, interestingly enough, in the article, they used a red ochre burial site that I've cited three different times in other videos. But I didn't know any of this connected to it because I don't talk to the paleobotanist or anything. And usually things like this just don't even get described at all in a lot of the literature. So let's look into this here. Um, surprising 5,000 year old cannabis trade. Eurasian steppe nomads were the earliest pot dealers. Let's see if I can get that centered for you here better. The nomad tribe, known as the Yamnaya culture, were amongst the founders of the European civilizations from the Proto-Indo-Europeans. They may have been the first pot dealers, archaeologists say. Moreover, they were responsible for the first transcontinental trade of cannabis. The tribe of nomads came from the eastern steppe region, which is nowadays Russia and Ukraine, and entered Europe about 5,000 years ago, bringing with them herding skills, metallurgy, and even the Indo-European languages. According to a recent analysis, they were also responsible for introducing marijuana and establishing the first transcontinental trade of the herb. And here we see some wild-looking marijuana growing. According to Seeker.com, the research carried out by specialists from the German Archaeological Institute and the Free University of Berlin involved in a systematic review of archaeological and paleo-environmental records of cannabis fibers, pollen, and arachne across Europe and East Asia. Um, Akini. Oh, that's weird. Uh, Akini is a Greek word. They're going to get fancy and throw something in there and make you look it up. Uh, Akini is a Greek word, and it's like whenever uh, uh, the goddess sprouts out of uh, the god's head in the first place off of it. You know, the titan's uh, forehead and so on. Akini is the word that's used for that. And, uh, yeah, it has to do with seeds. And also the word ache has to do with it, a splitting headache type of thing. All comes from this one concept and this this idea and everything of it. Let me uh let me look this up here. Okay, a kini, yeah, a Greek word, prerogative, yeah, kinine to gate, also also to use the kini. Okay, uh, sample of dried fruit, many species. Yeah, so a strawberry has those little bitty beads all over them, right, all over the surface. And if you look at them close, these are up real close here on them, and they have these little stamen, little stick sticking out of them. Almost looks like if you ever did the bean plant thing whenever you were a kid and you put the bean in the cotton with the water onto it and kept it for a couple of days and it would sprout and put the stem out. Well, that's the type of seedling that it has and works off of, and pot has that same little seamed stem that's on it, or seed that's on it, around its uh, shell, I guess, and uh, I bet they won't mention it, though. Let's see here if I can make this actually. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's called a seed, a kine, fruit-containing seed, on a wall collapse. Fruits of buttercup, buckwheat, caraway, quinona, amaranth, and cannabis are typical akinis. Okay, there you go. Agrit fruit. A rose produces one, two, so you have that type of idea. Uh, Calyx corolla. Yeah. So neat. Uh, uh, so here's something interesting. Uh, in a manner, uh, they'll accessory type structure similar to a tumbleweed, and this type is sometimes called a diaspora. Hmm. A diaspora. An example is anemone virginaria. Hmm, okay. Diaspora botany dispersal. Hmm. So it goes with plants and dispersal. That's neat. So winged akini, such as in a maple called a samara. Like Samaritans and Samara up there? That's that's odd. What does a Samara look like? I'll be damned. Isn't that a winged disc looking thing idea? What is up with that? 
a winged bikini. Hmm, Samara from a maple. Hmm. You know, when you drop them, they go shh, and they helicopter to a different location and then sprout up there. Right? Fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. Let's go back to this. So, cannabis fibers, pollen, and achenia across Europe and East Asia. During the study, they concluded that the herb was not used first. They concluded that the herb was not first used and domesticated somewhere in China or Central Asia. Rather, it was used in Europe and East Asia at the same time between 11,500 and 10,200 years ago as Tanguin Long and Mackay Wagner of the German Archaeological Institute at Pavel Tarzov at the Free University of Berlin and colleagues wrote in the Journal of Vegetation History and Archaeobotany. And we're missing a picture. Anyhow, cannabis seems to have grown as a component of natural vegetation across your age from the early Holocene. And I showed in the recent video there that it seems to go back millions of years, some 27 million years. They find it must have started over in the Tibetan Plateau area and spread out from there. And it seems to have spread to Eurasia very rapidly and up into China much later. And then the usage of it also follows that same idea much earlier over in Europe and down into the Levant and over even into Egypt, which I can show you in another recent video that I'll do, or an upcoming video that I'll do. And, uh, but then later it comes off into China. So, uh, he says, what is interesting is the fact that while Eurasians in the West made regular use of the herb down through the millennia, there are not too many archeological recordings of an early use of cannabis in East Asia. So, it's known that the people quickly discovered the plant's versatility, using it as a medicine, a food source, raw fiber materials for rope and textiles, or even exploiting its mind-bending properties and I told you there was a rope that they had found that dates right at like 27,000 BC that they had made out of this, a strong rope. And uh, that's what ropes were made out of in, in ancient days. People knew of its tensile streak, the uh, stems of pot. If you were to take it and just wrench it around a whole bunch and turn it into fibers and twist it up, take three of those and coil them around each other and then try to pull on that thing, that's, that's got some tensile strength to it. It's incredible. And it's, uh, hemp ropes used especially in shipping and things like that because hemp has a durability to it. People used to wear it as all kinds of clothes, all, all kinds of stuff. Anyhow, um, it is known that people quickly discovered the plant's versatility using it as a medicine, food source, raw fiber for ropes, textiles, and even exploiting its mind-bending properties. However, the discovery of these uses did not appear in the East until later. This occurred about 5,000 years ago and so about 3000 BC or so when the use of cannabis intensified in the East Asian area as shown in the archaeological records. The researchers believe that it could be associated with the Trans-Eurasian Exchange Migration Network through the Steppe Zone. Uh, people, that's the, uh, okay, you know how we can't say Aryan anymore so we have to say Proto-Indo-Europeans? Right. So now you can't say pre-Silk Road, Silk Road, or actually the Silk Road, or the Proto-Silk Road. You can't say that it is there before it's there. They don't like that because for so many generations they thought it all started with Alexander and the Marco Polo and all that. So now whenever they know for a fact it was going on, they call it the Trans-Eurasian Exchange Migration Network through the Step Zone. Or if you want to put it into an anacronym, it would be a teamness. Teamness. Okay. The fact that cannabis had multiple uses made it an ideal candidate for being a cash crop. But uh, before cash, uh, they find that this actually predates coinage and stuff. This is back during the days of bartering and all types of things. And uh, another thing that I can't show you a picture of right now is there's a burial 
It's over in this area that's an Aryan burial, and they found it near horses and everything that goes with it in a chariot. And uh, the body had laid over it just raw cut cannabis with the whole stalk and everything on it and everything just laid across his body. It's kind of weird. But you can see here two cannabis plants. I don't know if you make it out much into this. It is kind of a badly worn photo that you see here. But you see a man right here, a step man, buoyant pants, right? Pointy boots a little bit, real pointy hat. Sound kind of familiar? And you see a black cloud horse, and then you see a black cloud dragon, right? Or a smoke dragon. And in this, it's an odd depiction. There are two cannabis plants on either side, almost like the pillars. And then what you see here is a boat and a bunch of water down here. And that's an ancient. Japanese depiction of a cannabis plant. Carbonized akinis and signs of cannabis during uh, burning were discovered at archaeological sites which suggest that that Yamnaya culture brought the practice of cannabis smoking with them as they spread across Eurasia. So there's them damn hippies moving in. Apart from this, bronze objects, technology, staple food crops such as millets, wheat, and barley Remains of horses and evidence of pandemic disease, diseases have all enabled researchers to track the movements of these ancient nomads. So there's a lot of things that they brought along with them with a lot of extra farming techniques and things that they had definitely learned that other people did not have at that time. And it definitely expanded. I mean, you put two and two together and you can end up with a better, bigger number. The trade road created by the Yamnea and their neighbors like Botain became a part of the Silk Road several millennia later, but it never ended. And in fact, there was always some type of middleman connection going on. And there's been an ancient, there's been a few guys that have made this idea that um, people trying to cut out the middleman in the buying of drugs and weapons and trade goods is what got a bunch of people killed off and it may have even led to upleadings to the Trojan War and the culture that happened right before it that caused a problem in its movement. So there's a lot to that. Look at these bronze spears that are right here and a medallion that you can see here and a fine pointed harpoon type thing that's there. Different blades. Yamnaya culture. While the latest discovery sheds light on the ancient trade of cannabis, it's not the oldest evidence of marijuana ever found. Brian Hill, a writer for Ancient Origins, reports that in 1997, a hemp rope dating back to 26,900 B.C. was found in Czechoslovakia. There you go. Uh, making the oldest known object to be associated with cannabis, or hemp, as it was described back then. It was, it was, it was hemp rope. And, and uh, you had to know what the hell that was. They weren't saying, I'm going to marijuana or cannabis about it, no. Since that time, hemp has played an important role in humanity's development. For thousands of years, marijuana was not only legal, but an important crop among cultures throughout history and held commercial, medicinal, and spiritual value for the cultures that contained it back whenever people had natural medicines and things, this was something that actually could do something for you. Another one was poppy, making opium and things out of it, which, if done in the right way, gives you a very much a numbing effect during pain and childbirth, or, you know, if you're just in extreme pain for some reason, or got hurt, whether in war or something going on, and uh, that can be seen all the way up legally, too, all in America's uh, even like the show Rooster Cogburn where um, John Wayne is about to die and he's drinking that purple drink looking stuff out of the bottle there. That is supposed to be liquid opiate that he's drinking to keep his pain down. And it's strange, but at that same time, he already had cancer starting to take him. And they believe that cancer came from them filming Genghis Khan out in the desert in an area that's pretty much right downwind from an old asbestos plant. And strangely, in that, there's like seven or eight people that were in those movies, not counting the extras running their horses and crap, 
that all died of cancer rippling out of that and all similar types of cancer that they've now traced it to asbestos so anyhow kind of neat so um, the culture of cannabis and the cultivation of cannabis commonly known as marijuana nowadays can be traced at least back 12,000 years which places the plant among humanity's oldest cultivation crops we call it marijuana now because it, it Mary it starts out with that and that has to do with meeting the mother and the sacred mother and the wana so it's it is it is got a connotation built into its own name there and also co Mary also goes with water and it goes with well the water of life but it also goes with uh, maritime and mariculture and uh, marine Mary and God's face hovered above the waters and God made Jesus and Mary with a sacred birth type thing. Anyhow, it's just an echoing, a typology that keeps recurring in, in the Bible, if you catch what I just said there. Um, cannabis plants are believed to have evolved in Central Asia, in the regions of Mongolia and Southern Siberia. So by these Proto-Indo-Europeans that we've been talking about so much here recently, and have shown that they were the people that first migrated over into the Americas before the Amerindians had. A secret that's been long held and kept that's finally the mist is kind of blowing off of that too as we talk about it. The earliest cultural evidence of cannabis comes from the oldest known Neolithic culture in China, the Yangshao, who appeared along the Yellow River Valley from 5000 to 3000 BC. The economy of the Yangshao was cannabis driven. Archaeological evidence shows that they wore hemp clothing, wove hemp, and produced hemp pottery. This is a piece of it right here. And so you talk about corded wear and all these type of things. Well, here's your cannabis wear. And it's got now, now if you look at the shape of the amphora, that's very Sumerian and so on. You can see that in the amphora type things and where the idea of that comes from. But uh, yeah, hemp cord marked amphora, 4800 BC. The first recorded use of marijuana as a medicinal drug occurred in 2737 BC by the Chinese Emperor Xian Nung. He described the drug's effectiveness in treating the pains of rheumatism and gout. So apparently he had been given this not too long before that and then he made a count of how it had helped him. And we know about CBD oils helping people with things just like this quite a bit nowadays. And uh, another thing I'll throw in here, one of the ancient, I can't find a picture of it now, I can't find a recollection of it because it was a thing that uh, it's a small vessel that didn't have a lid on it probably about this size right here and it was known as a ointment type jar where it would have had um, sacred oils and anointing oil type in it and they touted it as having it was an anointing thing right that's exactly what it was and uh, made out of alabaster Anyhow, somebody finally took a swab, whether it had alcohol or water on it or whatever, and swabbed it in there and put that onto a plate and stuck it in the glass, grass chromatograph and it showed up that it was like cannabis oil and THC was in there, but at a lower amount and stuff, but it's, there's your CBD oil. And of course, I had never heard of CBD oil. That's something new in the last like 10 years or whatever, right? Well, no, no, no apparently these people and the food and the oil seeds for food and oil has been known about for a long time here so the ancient Chinese used virtually every part of the plant the root for medicine the stem for textiles rope and paper making the leaves and flowers for intoxication and medicine and the seeds for food and oil it's indeed an incredible crop that you can use everything out of and then the other part of it the flowering part of it becomes a medicine and you know or whatever hey party a little bit and uh, it's become legal in America in quite a few places now and around the world. And somebody said that up in Canada it had become legal. And I think it was only going to be in one of the provinces. But uh, then they made it the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not sure. Somebody down in the comments can sure tell me. Uh, anyhow, cannabis seeds were also one of the grains of early China. And ancient tombs of China had sacrificial vessels filled with hemp for the afterlife. 
And there's another thing that you don't get told about it at all. And this, uh, there's another article that's hooked up to this, but it's one of those pay for articles. So you only get to hear a part of it. But I think, uh, I think we'll take a look at that. This is that other article. And this is the one I'm referring to. Kick in that Black Sabbath music again. This is a dragon fractal. And then it's made of pot leaves. The Indo-European Legacy of Ancient Cannabis and this was just here a couple of months ago came out. There are a few plants that have caused upheavals in human society comparable to those centered on cannabis in modern times where everybody seems to be freaking out a little too much about it or whatever. It seems it's just a controversial case and subject especially in America through the Bible Belt area. I mean these people uh, it was hard to get liquor in certain places. It's kept a dis certain distance from churches and schools and things. And I think that's a great idea, too. The same thing is done with pot, of course, too. There's only certain little areas of town, almost, that they have this going on in certain shopping centers and things like that. But it's also discreet. You don't even know what that is. What is that, a tan salon? What is that? And then you go in, and that's not. But you have to have your card or things like that or whatever. I don't know. Um... Since the declaration of war on cannabis by American President Richard Nixon in the 70s, and then the war on drugs and Reaganomics and all those things, and then the war on uh, music, and it just went from there, um, the American prison population has exploded from 300,000 to 2.2 million people. And the United States has become home to nearly 25% of the imprisoned population of the entire world. As of 2018, between 40 and 50 percent of drug arrests in the United States were for cannabis. The situation in America is mirrored by similar wars on cannabis in other Western societies, such as the United Kingdom, where 2.1 million adults, averaged 16 to 59, used the plant in 2016 in spite of its illegally or illegality. But it used to be illegal. Or it used to be very legal. Here is cannabis. Americana and it's USB certified physiologically tested I'm sorry people our American variety is the answer to the question which has to so long troubled manufacturers with our material finished product we can be turned out at a reasonable cost it is no longer necessary to depend on the foreign variety which is of high cost and slightly superior the uncertainty of further supplies of it is another factor favoring the American product. And the J.L. Hopkins Company here, this is a Cannabis Americana distributor logo in the United States in 1917. And it was, uh, what was it, 1930s or whatever that they actually uh, made a marijuana, well, shortly before that, then they made a marijuana tax and that you could still grow it, but then you had to have a tax so they could make even more money off of it while you were growing the hemp to make the stuff for the government. But, uh, yeah. The attitudes supporting prohibition have begun to collapse in recent years, though. The myriad possible medical applications of cannabis and treating diseases, disorders, and other ailments are becoming increasingly well-known, especially with that CBD oil and things like that. Politically, the grim statistics noted at the beginning of this article are offset by the fact that while United States federal policies remain unchanging, Ten states and the District of Columbia itself have legalized cannabis for recreational use, and 21 states have legalized medicinal usage. Canada has become the first North American country to legalize recreation cannabis use fully, so I'm guessing that is fully. <coughs> Pardon me. And some experts predict something similar in the United Kingdom within five years. South Africa has also legalized recreational use back in 2018 so um, 
uh, we're the stalwart, I guess, out of the thing. We're bullish on cannabis. Ancient cannabis use. What seems to be missing from the highly politicized discussion concerning this issue is the incredible history that cannabis shares with humankind. In fact, the modern legal perspective of mind-altering plants, such as cannabis, is the polar opposite to the ancient worldview, as explained by Merlin. In 2003, whenever he wrote, we live in an age whenever a divine vision is dismissed as a hallucination and desire to experience a direct communication with God is often interpreted as a sign of mental illness and of course in a modern day looking at Christianity some of these, these things that go on nevertheless some scholars and scientists assert that such visions and communications are fundamentally derived from an ancient and ongoing cultural tradition humans have a very ancient tradition involving the use of mind-altering experience to produce profound, more or less spiritual and cultural understanding. And it's involved in all kinds of ancient rituals. The ancient Aryans used Soma, which is ephedrine and poppy, like opium poppy, and cannabis. And it was a sacred concoction, and apparently they made it a few different ways. And, uh, you know, ancient drugs they used, like mandrake and things like this, if used in the right way, they called it. They used to call it the love apple or the love drug and things. And of course, it has a man's shape into it. If you've seen Harry Potter, they used to put them under their bed to see if they could get pregnant after being married. And all these things went on with it. Sometimes one of the wedding gifts would be a mandrake uh, root given to somebody and things. And there's all these stories about how you have to. You can't pick a mandrake; it screams. And that's what's shown in Harry Potter. So what you had to do is take something like a dog or other things and you would tie him up to the root by his collar and then you'd make him sit and then you'd walk off and then run off real quick and call the dog and he would run after you and it would kill the dog but you could get a mandrake out of it that was that was the idea that's what they told people so then apparently that was just trying to keep people away from it in some way some type of a voo off of it but uh so this picture here is cannabis and where does Cana, Cana, Canaan, Cana, 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 that all has to do with each other and cannabis. And you can see this plant here with even this little rooting system. A drawing of cannabis sativa from Vienna Dioscuris. Hmm. Some god plants, huh? That's odd. And in this book, it looks like somebody visited and they wrote a different language didn't they and here and here and then up here we have written in Greek Cannabokamea huh and then someone else has written it out here that's strange and you can also see words here where it's bled through probably from the other side a picture on one side and then words so when you opened up the book, the left side said the words about the picture on the right. You flip the picture over, then the words are on the left, which is on the back of that, and so on. So the other page and its discourse on it. Almost wish I could see that discourse and uh, have an interpretation off of it. But yeah, guys, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. But yeah, the history of cannabis and how it used to be a, not an illegal thing in America. Uh, and then it became very much an illegal thing. And they started using it in a way uh, like they did in Prohibition somewhat to uh, make money off of. And you can imagine the amount of people in prison at thirty to $45,000 a year per person that are being pulled off of that. And how that works. And how when they put people on probation and get them to paying every month and all these type of things of these fines over this simplistic type thing. You know, it almost seems weird to them, I'm sure, to drop that, but have the other harsh drugs still stay in, in place. But to a lot of people, it makes perfect sense. It's, uh, hey, you're drinking alcohol. Here's an important fact. You can smoke like crazy. Once you, unless you have some kind of God pot you found somewhere, if you're used to it in any way, if you smoke pot, you won't get any higher than a certain point. In fact, you can pretty much smoke yourself either straight or tired enough to want to go to sleep or just have the munchies, something like that. 
But if you take five shots of liquor, you're probably more messed up than you'll ever be on pot, I'm sure. Probably four, three, somewhere in there, I don't know. You'd have to have people try and try and play chess, do something like that. Uh, you know, check cognition skills and motor skills and everything to go along with it. But uh, if you take five more shots of liquor, you are totally lost it. And most people who can't handle liquor very much are to a point they are totally not legal. And if they're driving or anything like that, would be a very bad, bad thing. Whereas the pot never reaches level three over here. And liquor goes higher. You can kill yourself on liquor, but you can't kill yourself on pot. Unless you want to talk about the chance of smoking so much you can get lung cancer or something. But they found that it helps to cure cancer now. So, hey, how about that? Anyhow, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. And uh, we'll look into a few more of these stories as we go on. But, yeah, Proto-Indo-Europeans bringing it off into Europeans. But, but they are the Europeans. They're the blend that became the Europeans. Peace.